Hi there, Digital Makers, and welcome to this week's episode of Digital Making at Home from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, our weekly on-demand videos. Um, my name's Mark, and this is my psychic, Jimmy. Hello. And what's the theme this week? Make it colourful. This week we're exploring colour and art and, and how to make things colourful. So what I thought we'd do this week is we would have a look at a project using an add-on for the Raspberry Pi called the Sense Hat. Um, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi and you don't have a sense hat, you're still going to be able to follow along with this project at home because uh, we've got an emulator on our website called Trinket. But if you do have a Raspberry Pi and you do have a sense hat, then great, you can follow along with us. All right then, so let's get started, Jimmy. We'll um, open up Chrome, I think, to begin with. All right, now the project is at rpf.io forward slash dm hyphen sparkles. Excellent, and this is the project that Jimmy and I are going to be doing today. All the instructions are here if you wanted to follow along with it. And Jimmy's just going to run the Trinket emulator there that you're going to be using, and you can see the results. We get this lots of different colors popping up on the emulated sense hat there. All right, so yeah. let's get started. Let's go to uh, the Trinket website. So open up another tab and go to trinket.io. And Jimmy's already logged into Trinket.io, but if you're not logged in, you can uh, log in with Google and Facebook and various other things, or you can just create your own account using an email. All right, and once we're there, let's go and create a new Trinket. So click on, uh, where do we do that? Up at the top, go back up to the top, and just underneath your username, I think it is, go to uh, new Trinket, that's it. And we want a Python Trinket, okay? just a standard Python trinket. Now, the text is a little bit small on the screen, so what Jimmy's gonna do is he's going to expand that text to make it a little bit larger for us. He goes to the hamburger menu, and then can increase the text size so that you'll be able to see what we do. So, in order to be able to use the sense hat, you need to first import the sense hat module, and that's a bunch of code that's been written which will send instructions to the sense hat for us, so we don't have to worry about all the real technical stuff. So, how do we import our sense hat module, Jim? So, I'm going to go from sense hat, so sense and underscore hat, import, and then with a capital letter, sense, and then with a capital H hat. Good. So what we're doing there is we're taking this library called the sense hat library. That's the lowercase underscore one. That's the library. And we're importing from it what's called an, uh, it, it, an object called um, the sense hat. All right. And now we have to uh, make that object ourselves in our code. So we need to say um, sense equals and then sense hat again with a capital S and a capital T. Now I didn't have to call it sense. Jimmy could have called it anything he liked, but using sense makes sense, I suppose. <laughs> um, so we'll keep it at sense, yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. Right, and now we're going to um, light up a pixel on our sense hat. So if, actually, if you just run this code now, Jim, what will happen is over on the right hand side, we'll get that trinket emulator. Now that at the moment is showing what's called the Astro Pi. Just make our text size really small again so we can see the whole thing. That's it. That's called the Astro Pi. Um, now we're gonna be doing a space module in a few weeks time, but the Astro Pi is a sense hat on a Raspberry Pi in a special aluminum case, and there's two of them right now up on the International Space Station. And this is just a visualization of what the Astro Pi looks like for a competition we run called um, the Astro Pi program, which you can Google and uh, we'll, we'll bring up a short link for you in a minute. Okay, so we don't want to see the Astro Pi. Can we just see the sense hat on its own? So this is what the sense hat looks just on its own on top of a Raspberry Pi, okay? And what Jim's gonna do now is he's gonna light up one of the LEDs, okay? So, uh, make your text really big again, Jim. Excellent, now then, so, we want to say set a pixel, okay? So, sense dot set underscore pixel. Now, first thing we need to do is tell it which pixel we're going to light up. So how are, how do we describe pixels on a screen? What are the ways that we describe them? So we describe them using our X and Y coordinates. Brilliant, and X is? X being left and right, so horizontally. Yep. 
And why being up and down so vertically? Good. And so the top left corner would be what? The top left corner would be y7 and x0. Nope. Mm -hmm. Guess again. Top left. Top left on the screen, right up here. Oh, x0, y7. x0, y7. y7. <laughs> it's not the same as Scratch in Python, yeah? We always start from the top, top, top left when we're doing our numbering. Whereas oh. in Scratch, you start from the middle, yeah? So what would it be for... Mine? <laughs> X minus... No. No. Zero and... Zero. Zero and zero. Good. Okay, so let's open a set of brackets. There we go. And we'll say we're going to go for the top left. So that's... Far on the left is zero. So... And then right up at the top is zero on the Y. Okay, now what do we need to tell it? Uh, our colours. We need our colours. Now then, can you get this one right? <laughs> How are colours described by a computer? So they scroll through RGB values. What does R, G and B stand for? Red, green and blue. Okay, and what's the minimum red, green and blue we can have? Zero. And what's the maximum red, green and blue? 255. 255, good. And the reason is, is because computers work in binary, and 255 is, well, actually 256 is the largest um, number you can get when you're counting in binary using eight ones and zeros, okay? So we've got zero up to 255. So how much red do you want? So I'm going to have maximum red, okay. so 255. So Good, so he's opening another set of brackets here. I'm typing 255, comma, space. Good, and how much green do you want? I'll uh, we'll go 130. Good. And then uh, how much blue? Um, 231. Good. All right, then. Let's run that code and see what happens. Oh, we've made a mistake somewhere. Oh, I'll tell you what we haven't done. We haven't put open and close brackets at the end of the sense hat on that second line. There uh, we go. Open and close brackets. That's important there. Good. Right, let's go run it again. Oh, now I can't see it because of the text size. So there we go. That's the one lit. Do you want to just make your text size really small again? Yeah. And then we can see what it looks like. There we go. So that pixel up in the top left-hand corner, we've got 8 by 8 pixels. That pixel up in the top left-hand corner is now illuminated in the colours that Jimmy described. Okay, so 245, 130, 231. Now we're going to do something a little different. Now you guys can all carry on programming in Trinket. If you don't have a Raspberry Pi, you don't have a Sense Hat. But if you do have a Raspberry Pi and you do have a Sense Hat, you might want to follow along with us using your physical devices. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, um, do you want to just switch over to, um, so we can see the Sense Hat, our real life Sense Hat that we've got. So here we go. I've got a Sense Hat sitting here. Okay. Um, at the moment it's got a pixel already illuminated up in the top left hand corner and we're going to now log into our Raspberry Pi and we're going to have a go at controlling that. So um, you can minimise the web browser. Jim, oh, oh. that's alright. There we go. And just open up VNC and open it up. That's it. Just open. We've got the we've got the screen already up. That's fine. So what Jimmy and I are doing is we've remoted onto our Raspberry Pi using uh, VNC. Okay, so that we can remote control the Raspberry Pi, so it makes it easy for us to film and, and show you what's going on. So Jimmy's going to open up a program called Mu. So I go to the Raspberry Pi symbol at the top left, go into programming, and then I go into Mu. And it should load up with the last program we wrote. So there we go open that up so let's just show them let's change the pixel yeah let's change which pixel we're putting in so three and six and then do you want to change the color uh yeah so i'll turn down my red to five and i'll change my middle one here to 238 okay and then let's just run that and we see we get another little we've got like little green pixel there illuminated now Okay, I hope that's clear to you all at home. It's a bit difficult on these webcams to show um, exactly what those pixels look like. But as I said, you can follow along in Trinket and just you'll, you'll see the colours really clearly there. Okay then, right, I want to get rid of all the coloured pixels. Okay, so can we delete that line, uh, that line four? Excellent, 
Okay, and we'll just do sense dot clear open close brackets and run that. Good. All right. Then. So what we're going to do in this project is we're going to light up. No, you can you can leave that in oh, okay. at the beginning of the program. We're going to li light up lots of random pixels all over the screen in lots of different random colors. Okay. So we need to um, be able to access random numbers in Python. Can you remember how to do that? So is it from random import random? Perfect. Yep, yeah, that's the one. So from the random module, Jimmy's going to import a function called rand int. Excellent. Right. Can we put um can we put a, a line break in between our imports and our objects? Yep. That's it. Just one line break away. Okay. There we go. And then come down. Okay. <laughs> All right then. So we want to randomize our x and y position first, yeah? Yeah. So we want to create a variable that is a random number for x between what numbers? Uh, zero and seven. Zero and seven, perfect, because there's eight pixels along, but we start counting from zero. So we're going zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, total number of pixels, eight. So let's set our x variable. So x equals, oh, x equals, it would be random. Yep. And open close brackets zero comma seven. Yep, that's perfect. And then okay. do a y. So I'm just. I'm just going to copy and paste. Yeah. And that's it. As my buddy Mr C says we oh. work smarter, not harder. So if you can copy and paste, um, it's always Eventually. better. So there we go. And now I'll change that to a y. Great. So let's just set a pixel now using that. Okay. So let's come down a line and go um, sense.setPixel. That's it. And now um, we can use our X and Y that we've created because they're random numbers and then we'll just set an arbitrary color, whatever you want. I think you're missing a comma there. What? After the Y. Uh. So we're gonna, he, Jimmy's just chosen any random numbers that he wants at the moment. Okay, let's run that and run it, stop it and run it again. And then we can see that that pixel's jumping over the screen. Each time Jimmy runs the program, the pixel goes to a different location. It's going to a random X and a random Y. Okay? Yep. Right then, let's get some random colors now. So what did you say that colors were made up with on the computer? So an RGB value, which okay. is red, green, blue. All right, so what are we gonna call your variables? So R, G, and B. Good. So again, Jimmy's just copied and pasted, and, and it goes from... Zero to 255. Excellent. And I can change that to G, and go down one, and change this one to a B. Brilliant. So now we've got these we've got, now got five variables in total we've got a random x which is horizontal okay from top left on the on, the, on here to uh, top right and then we've got um y which is um i did that the wrong way around top to bottom and then top to bottom there we go okay so we've got our random x and y between zero and seven and jimmy's got now random variables representing red green and blue okay from zero up to 255 so that's all the colors that the sensor is capable of um doing so should we put those rgb values into you getting bored yeah <laughs> so do r g and b okay and run your code and now let's i tell you what take out that sense.clear for me or just put a hash in front of it So he's put a hash in there which comments out the code so that sense.clear line won't run, okay? And now when he runs it, that pixel, the last pixel will stay illuminated on the sense hat so he keeps lighting up all the same pixels, all different pixels. Every time he runs it, we get another pixel added in, all right? So we've got all these wonderful colors being created on my sense hat. 
It's probably not very clear on your screens, but we'll put it into Trinket in a second, yeah? In fact, should we copy and paste it into Trinket now really quick? Actually, no, we can't do that because we're on VNC. I don't think we share a clipboard. Oh, okay. So don't worry about it. Um, right, so we've got now our random positions and our random colors, yeah? Do me a favor, will you just put spaces between your RGB? I'm really pedantic about my code. I, I get like, there we go. I do like to see spaces after a comma. Okay. All right, so now we want this to happen like a lot. So we're gonna use a while true loop? Yeah, so what does a while true loop do? It repeats it over and over and over and over. And when does it end? It doesn't end. It doesn't end, because true no, is always true. True. Yeah. So we're saying while true, so forever, run this code. So Jimmy's going to put in a while true loop. While not that, while true. What have you done wrong on the true? I'm not sure. Underscore? No. No? No. How do you spell true in Python? Capital T. Capital T. And do you end a, do you end it with open brackets, close brackets? I don't know. What do you end it with? Can you remember? No. Nope. So it's the same as like a function definition, um, a for loop, a while loop, anything like that ends with, and an if statement. Oh, yeah? a colon. A colon, that's it. And then what do you need to do to all the code underneath it? So now I just need to indent this, so I'll highlight it all and then press tab. Excellent. Right then, let's see what happens here. And there we've got all our colours being randomly displayed on our very, very bright sense hat. Okay. It's a bit fast. Yeah, should we add in? Should we slow it down a little bit? Yep. Okay, how are you going to slow it down? So I'll go up to the top here and I'll say from time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Import. Wait. No, wait, the scratch sleep. word, sleep is the Python word, good. One time import sleep, and then how long do you want to sleep for in your loop? Um, so... You can put it at the top of the loop if you want, it doesn't make a difference. Oh, is it not? No. Turn it in the true loop. It, yeah, but it can go at the top of the true loop, it doesn't have to go at the bottom of the true loop. So it's still going to be inside the while true, but it can oh, be... Yeah. It can be before your variables or after your variables. It won't make a blind bit of difference. I'll put it in here. Okay. I'll so, say what are you going to sleep for? Sleep. And then we'll say sleep for 0 0.5 seconds. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Can I not zoom out? No, you just scroll up to the top. There you go. Yeah. All right. I think that might be a little bit too long. Yeah. Because it's changing very slowly. So I'll change that to 0 0.1. I'd go even less than that if I was you. Okay, try that. <laughs> ah, that's, that's better. Fast. Yeah, I like that. Oh, do you want to go a bit slower? Okay, go. Yeah. Go, shoot. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. That's, that's quite nice. nice. It looks nice to us anyway. I'm not sure how it looks on your screen. It's a big. <laughs> big blur of light brilliant and that's the random sparkles program so um do have a go at this and as we said you can quite easily just do this in trinket.io you don't need a sense you don't need a raspberry pi um, we just thought we'd show off and, and show you our, our project so that is it from us this week i hope you've enjoyed this video um don't forget, we've got lots of other stuff going on at rpf.io forward slash home. You can have a look at all the past videos we've done. You can have a look at the live streams we've done. And don't forget to check out the live stream at 2 p.m. British Standard Time this Wednesday, um, where Mr. C will be running through a colourful creations type project for you. So please do have a look at the other stuff at rpf.io and please share your work with us. We love, love, love seeing the work. So if you've made a project, if you've altered the Sensat project, played around with the numbers a little bit, um, changed your sleep times, that kind of thing, or done something even more impressive on your Sensat, then please do share your projects with us at rpf.io forward slash home. And that's it for me and Jimmy this week. Okay, so hopefully we'll see you all again soon and I will say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.